Hi everyone, thanks for watching this far into the video. If you have, you're probably starting to say to yourself, what the heck is Gaz on this time? Well, the preceding few minutes explain the, the background story to this video and why it is that I'm going to show you four different battles in a Forsaken Mission 102 level Draconian base. Now, if you want to skip all these shipbuild screens that you're looking at right now and get straight to the battles, just jump ahead to about 5 minutes 20 into the video. You can always come back and look at these another time. But these screens explain the, or show the ships that I'm using um, throughout the, the four battles. Now, why have I made this video? Well, as, I, as you saw in the introduction while listening to the Hall of the Mountain King, um, I posted a problem with the, the Forsaken missions in the first week of November on the forums and a bunch of people just said that I was dreaming, I was lying, I was hallucinating and it finished up with one of the official forum mods outright calling me a liar. Now that's not something that uh, any good pirate will take lying down. So here's the proof of different stuff that I was saying. Now the key to this whole thing is that um, initial after battle screen that I uh, showed you at about two minutes into the video showing six and a half hours of damage to my regular Forsaken mission fleet. Something had changed. That fleet normally took about 30 minutes damage in a 102 and I wanted to find out why. So I've done four battles with slight fleet variations and we'll see what happens. Um, and I think you're going to be very surprised at the results. The first battle that we're going to be taking a look at is the fleet that I used to use all the time, which was um, two Punishers and three Rhinos. Now, when they changed the 107s to the 102s and tried to push everybody into doing the 109s with mortar fleets, that fleet more or less became redundant, but it still has value, as you'll see. So, here we go, diving into a 102, and, you know, I still have a great love for this fleet. 
it saw me all the way through the um, Civil War raids until the very last one, the whole store raid, when I'd actually got the Apollos and got them built and had a fleet of them to do the running around with. But the Rhinos still supported those Apollos. And I like using the Punishers and uh, Rhinos in a 1 or 2 because they feel as if you're doing them faster and they also have um, just more action going on on screen. Now, in that opening battle results screen, um, the fleet had been using a Bullseye Brigade crew, and I was using that, um, and I'd used used it the week before without a problem. The Bullseye Brigade crew has an unpublished statistic on the blueprint, in that it, in addition to making your, your guns and torpedoes and stuff, guaranteed to hit things, it does the same with your countermeasure weapons, your anti-mortar, your anti-missile, and your anti-UAV weapons. And it works very, very well, as people who did the um, mega hulls in the uh, Apollo raids will testify to, and those who are still using them to do the mega hulls to get parts for the gantry and for the forsaken mega hull that you can build at your base. They will tell you the Bullseye Brigade on Apollos makes those targets absolutely no problem whatsoever. So, this time round I'm using the Creeping Death Crew. It gives 19% bonus to base damage and I'm going to use that same crew in each of the battles in this video. So as we get our ships into position we target the ARC missile and we launch a pinch at it and we send all of the ships in. Now the two Punishers I put more or less directly underneath the wall. Um, they take all of the, the missile and defense turret fire and the Rhinos creep in to within the minimum range for the ARC missile while it's getting killed. Now if you're going to use Rhinos in these targets you absolutely have to use the pinch missile because they will take a pasting from the pinch missile once the punishers are too close for the arc to fire at sorry I said from the pinch missile from the arc missile once the arc missile can no longer fire at the punishers it will fire at the rhinos and they're not fast enough to escape it so they will take a lot of splash damage which is why in the second Park the top left of this target, you'll see me keep the rhinos out of range until the punishers have killed the arc missile. Now, I could do this end of the target, leave, and then come back in at the other end and use another pinch. And I used to do that, but it was, and it was great in the 107s because you got the points that allowed you each week to build enough pinches. But now with the 102s, you just don't get enough points to be able to do 26 targets using two pinches on each of them. And that's why I do one end with a pinch and go to the other end and do it without it. Now, if you watch the Zoe's missiles coming in here and remembering that I've got something like um, five or six phalanx fours plus a switchblade plus some phalanx twos on the two punishers plus there's at least a phalanx three if not a phalanx four on each of the rhinos did you see how many of those Zoe missiles were still coming through and hitting my lead punisher and that is why it is so maxed out on missile defense in fact, both of the Punishers are. There is an insane level of flak evasion on those Zoe missiles. But we all know this. We got used to it during the Apollo raids. So there's no surprise there. And it's been that way since the 107s and the 102s were introduced. I've built the fleet to handle it. And it normally does very, very well. But on the 3rd and 4th of November, 
in the first couple of days of the first Forsaken mission of November, it was trashing my fleet, absolutely hammering it. Average repairs per battle went from 27 minutes to six and a half hours. And the six and a half hours was with a bullseye brigade crew, which are supposed to guarantee that every countermeasure shot will hit an incoming weapon, whether it's a mortar or a missile or a UAV, depending on the weapon that you've mounted on your ships. Now, these guys don't have that. They're just using, as I said, the creeping death crew which gives extra damage against the base. And yet, as you'll see at the end of the video, they take almost no damage. At least compared to that opening screenshot. So again, similar positions at this end of the, the base. Send the two Punishers out individually on their own. And we hold the Rhinos back. And then as soon as the arc missile fires we bring in the two punishers to just under the walls and we kill the arc turret and the two punishers have got rail guns on them and they've also got a particle accelerator cannon each on them and that means that as long as I've got the alignment right they'll fire through the outside middle turret into the arc turret and they'll penetrate through to the mortar um, turret behind the arc turret and into the building that gives the turrets a defense boost. Now at this end just watch how occasionally mortar shells get through the um, combined hailstorm and gales anti-mortar defenses on the two punishers. They didn't at the other end of the, the attack. And that leads me to think that there's something different at this end. And you'll see that that's a recurring theme through the four attacks, that I keep coming back to this and saying there is something different at this end of the base with the mortars. I don't know what it is whether it's a flak evasion or whether it's a, an increased salvo size whatever it is more mortar shells get through to hit the punishers at this end of the base than they do at the southeast corner so with all the turrets on that platform down we just jink the fleet forward a little bit and send the two punishers round the corner to snipe at the torpedo tower because it won't shoot at them as long as they're up against the wall. Then we ease them forward to take out the Citadel, supported by the Rhinos obviously, and this particular part of the attack at each end does take a little bit longer with the Rhinos than it does with a mortar fleet because of the Iron Curtain turret on the Middle Islands. Having done that, we target the building um, that gives the defense to the turrets. That brings the rhinos or the mortar fleet just forward far enough to put the last Zoe rhino within their remote targeting range. The punishers move across to the side of the island to attract the fire from the turrets, while the rhinos kill off those turrets. And again, using rail guns, you try to get the three, the row of three turrets in a line for the Punishers. That way they can do penetrating damage um, with, with the rail guns. And you see how the retargeting off the Rhinos, off the last five salvos, take out the torpedo tower without having to put a ship in a position where the torpedo tower will fire at them. Now if you're worried about snipers in your sector, at the point where you've targeted the OP, you can leave the target to look outside. Now, Laredo says a missile fleet is the wrong fleet to use in the FM. Uh, yeah, you sure? I've just done the one or two, and it's got 27 minutes, most of which is on the two Punishers. Looks like a little bit of splash managed to clip each of the rhinos, 
but it's so small that each of those, or even all three together, will be an instant free repair in base as soon as I drop the two Punishers from the fleet. So, yeah, Laredo, missile fleets. They're the wrong fleets to use in the Forsaken Mission 102s, eh? Yep. Okay. If you say so. The repair time that I'm showing there can be reduced, and I've done it many times, by using two hits and using two pinch rockets. That means coming in at the opposite ends of the um, drac base and using a pinch on each of the arcs. Okay, battle replay number two. The Hailstorm Punisher plus a Switchblade Apollo plus the three Rhinos. Why am I using a Apollo or an Apollo with Switchblades on it? To attack a drac base. Well, you remember those insane flak evade Zoe Rhino missiles? You can reduce the number of them that get through using an Apollo. Didn't expect that one, did you? Think back to the Apollo raids earlier in the year from what was it? May through to August? We were all using Apollos with switchblades against Zoe's Rhinos, weren't we? Yeah. Yes, we was. But how well will they do in a drag base? Well, <laughs> we're going to find out, because you're going to see them in action twice. In this case, you're seeing them with the Hailstorm um, Punisher. That's the one that, for its anti-mortars, has got hailstorm guns on it. Hailstorm countermeasures. In the battle after this one, you'll see it with the Punisher that's got gales on it. And I'm hoping that we will see a fair old difference between the two. The gales should more effectively take down all the mortars than the hailstorms. The ships are pretty much identical, apart from that choice and the fact that um, the Gale's Punisher has got a switchblade on it instead of the Phalanx 2. So, exactly the same as the previous attack. We put the Punisher and the Apollo out singly. As soon as the arc fires, we drop a pinch on on that platform. Your targeting point is just behind the arc, between the arc and the mortar, but actually touching the edge of the arc, and that will then get you all seven turrets on the platform within the splash radius of your pinch. Now, I'm using extra large slow pinches in these videos, because that's all I had built when I made when I recorded them, but it does work with um, large slow pinches as well. It does give you enough time to get your rhinos or your, your mortar fleet in behind the punishers inside the minimum range for the arc missile. So remember that you can save yourself two hours of production on each pinch by using the large missile instead of the extra large. Now you'll notice I'm holding the Apollo back a little bit here and I'm letting the Punisher creep out in front. That's because the Punisher can tank the damage better but the switchblades on the Apollo have got a longer range than the anti-missiles on the Punisher. Plus I want the mortars to be firing at the Punisher because it's got the anti-mortar weapons on it. And you can see already that the Punisher is taking, the single Punisher is taking more damage this far into the target than either Punisher took at the end of the target in the last run through, in the first run through, sorry. So we move the, the Punisher forward to get the, the last of the turrets on that island and then we bring it back to get the Zoe and at this point, the Apollo and the Rhinos have received zero damage. 
and as soon as the Punisher is in range of course the rhinos open up and start blitzing the Zoe. The Apollo is using its switchblades to knock down the Zoe's missiles. Not quite getting all of them, but it's getting a good chunk of them. A lot more than the two Punishers were doing in the first attack. And then exactly the same path from here up to the top corner. We swing wide to stay away from the cryo mines that hover around the back of that octagonal turret. And then we go up to the map edge just there and we kink in a bit for the parking position on the rhinos just saves a little bit of travelling time and then we send the two tanks on ahead. The Punisher loops up and around you see one of the cryo mines there just tried to creep in on the rhinos um, I messed up the the pathing there somehow um, the Apollo we want to stop there and the Punisher loops around the top and comes in in direct line with the um, I think it's an executioner uh, might be a cold snap the arc missile and the mortar and the building giving the defense buff now the Apollo is showing a little bit of damage there I don't know where that came from unless the Zoe's missiles have gained splash which is always possible we know that Kixai likes to sneak these little things in on us without announcing them so for the moment we'll just hold on to the theory that the Zoe missiles have got splash I don't believe that the Punisher got within close enough range for the Zoe to utilize its death weapon which is quite a short range weapon compared to its missiles certainly I didn't see it firing off right so we're now in position there goes the arc bring in the Punisher bring in the Apollo so that the Apollo sits behind the Punisher that means that the Punisher is going to tank all the damage and you'll notice in this one and this is important to note the Apollo is going to sit directly behind the Punisher in line with those three turrets and the, the defense building that the Punisher is firing at that's going to become important or more apparently important when you see the next re the next battle replay which has the Apollo coupled with the Gales Punisher as opposed to the hailstorms on this one and you can see at this end again some of the mortar shells are getting through and of course these mortar shells lash and that's hurting the Apollo and that's why in the next battle 11 of them got through in that bunch must have had a complete failure on the hailstorms for an entire salvo bar one to get through you can see the Apollo is dying quite rapidly now with the splash from the mortars and in the next battle the Apollo is going to be a little bit more to one side rather than in direct line with the Punisher and there it goes the Apollo's dead and we've still got a quarter health on that arc turret now this is quite a panicky moment and there have been times in the past when <laughs> I've bottled out and I've pulled the pu Punisher away and gone back to base and repaired and come back to do the target but experience has shown me I don't actually need to do that because there finally the arc turret's dead and I can bring the rhinos in although by the time they get there there'll be nothing left on the island for them to shoot at or practically nothing and then we just go around the corner do the same as we did previously hit the torpedo tower hit the citadel hit the octagonal island then the Zoe and the retargeting on the rhinos will take down the torpedo tower once the torpedo tower is down the last torpedo tower is down as you click 
onto the um, OP in the middle. You can jump out to the map, as I was saying, so that if you're worried about insector snipers or uh, phantom sub snipers or whatever lurking outside ready to get you, it means you can be out of the target before the target's finished and you can click a point on the map for your fleet to immediately move to as long as soon as the red aura around it disappears. And that will throw off their attack and hopefully let you get away without them hitting you. And even here where it's only the Citadel firing mortars there are still the odd mortar getting through the defences on that Punisher. So I think the Citadel at this end is firing bigger salvos than the Citadel at the other end. Because remember the Rhinos have got anti-mortars on them and they're supplementing the anti-mortars on the Punisher. In total, when they're close together, there's still about six Phalanx 3s and 4s plus some Phalanx 2s taking down these mortars, which should be more than enough for one Citadel's volleys. I think it has 12 shells in its volley. So, the Rhinos have moved forward. Punisher moves to where it can snipe at the Zoe, and the Rhinos begin to punish it. It's gone, retargeting across to the Torpedo Tower, then just bring all the ships down to kill that OP, and that's the target finished. There we go. Nice and easy, simple as that. And I use this same path through the target in all four attacks. So there we are. We lost the Apollo, we almost lost the Punisher, and we got three hours, ten minutes repair, all of which, or most of which, is to the tanks. There's probably fifteen minutes damage total on the Rhinos. So, back to base for them guys, and We'll get them repaired up and then we can do the next target. And because I have the other Punisher to go and I have another Apollo ready to go with it, it's identical to this one, I only really need to repair the Rhinos, put on the other Punisher and the other Apollo and I can bring them straight back out while this Punisher and this Apollo are repairing in the base. Now that hovering about showing you the build was just so that you could confirm that the builds I showed you at the start of the video are in fact the builds that I used in the targets. So this time we're going into the 102 with the Punisher that's got Gales on it and it's mostly Gale 3s and I think it's, I think it's got a Gale 2 on it. You can check the build at the start of the video. The Apollo is identical to the last one, which is eight switchblades plus one blade um, plus a phalanx three or four. Um, and again, we're using the Creeping Death crew, not the Bullseye Brigade crew. So you would expect that this fleet, like the, the previous two attacks, you would expect this fleet to be taking more damage than the, the fleet at the very start of the video which took six and a half hours damage. I'll tell you now, it's not going to. And we're still trying to work out exactly why. Why did that fleet at the start of the video, after hitting just one, one or two, with a bullseye brigade on board, take six and a half hours damage? Remember, every target, including the ones before I did the recordings for this video, at least one pinch is used so that I take none or minimal damage from either the, plat the end platform at this end or the end platform at the other end, depending on which direction I'm coming in. And again,
again we're just waiting for the Punisher to get itself into position you know the Punisher six months ago we thought it was quite a quick ship but it's surprising how much time you spend waiting for it to get into position <coughs> excuse me I'm just gonna have a drink of water That's better. My throat was getting too dry. <clears throat> okay, so exactly the same as the previous two targets. Punisher's going in first, tanking all the damage. The Apollo is too fast for the um, the arc missile to target and hit. And the pinch has done its work in suppressing it anyway. So now the rhinos can close up and finish off all the targets and then we just follow the same path around to take out the torpedo tower using the Punisher um, and then to take out the Citadel and then the octagonal island. Now if you look carefully at the builds for the Punishers uh, sorry for the Rhinos yeah and look look at how the gales are completely failing at this end that's seven mortar shells got through there in rapid succession um, the rhinos, yeah, the missiles on the rhinos, they're a mix of blades and harriers and the disruptor missiles, all with a 76 base range and then the, the bonuses for the specials on the ship. Why do I include the disruptor missiles? Well, it's a trick I learned from the Zoe rhinos in the Apollo raids. Whether you hit ships or turrets, with uh, disruptor missiles it slows their reload not just the ship's speed if you can slow down the reload on the countermeasure turrets on the, on the iron wall turrets or whatever they're called iron curtain um, the draconian countermeasure turrets if you can slow down their fire rate using disruptor missiles then every time you're hitting them you're slowing them down more and more I think it's up to a maximum of 70% which means that even more of your missiles are going to get through now specs one of the forum moderators recommends that you put your um, blade missiles in your forwardmost weapon positions on your rhinos because those are the missiles that are going to approach the countermeasure turrets first and they've got the highest flak evade so they have more chance of getting through um, also it means that the countermeasure turrets will be firing at them and while it's reloading after firing at the high evasion blades your other missiles are getting through during the reload pause so you can get more missiles on target quicker and it works I've demonstrated it time after time after time with these three rhinos and they love going in against impossible countermeasures and just taking them out and <laughs> I don't hit many people's bases but when I do hit them with these and shred their countermeasure turrets <laughs> the crying that I get in personal messages is unreal and that's you know it's all down to the secret send your highest evade missiles in from the front of your ship and then send your turret slowing missiles in from the back of the ship while the countermeasure turrets are reloading it works against the draconians it works against the legion and it works against players bases now oh, maybe i shouldn't have told you that because you'll use it on me but <laughs> you know let's share some information guys and give each other an advantage yeah we need all the advantages we can get with the way that the raids and the the limited time uh, campaigns have been going so Punisher's on its way in exactly the same as the previous targets and you'll notice this time the Apollo is gonna sit a little bit to the left of where the Punisher is gonna stop and hopefully that'll reduce the amount of splash that's getting through to it because the Punisher now is not only forward of it but to the right of it 
yeah they are just confirming the Apollo is in a slightly different position um, one of the key splashes that it will avoid is from the mortar turret on the island because um, in, instead of being behind the Apollo and catching the splash from that it's now off to the side and will catch less of it now just look at those mortar groups coming in off the citadel right they're getting shredded and only the odd one is getting past the gales there's a second one but again it's just an odd one at this end so have we got a situation where the hailstorms work better on the southeast turrets because of whatever configuration kicks I have given them and the gales work better on the northwest island on this very limited test it certainly seems to be that way so that's four individual mortar shells that have got through the gales if the rhinos had been in there up alongside the Apollo then the extra hailstorms uh, hail on the rhinos would probably have stopped those four single mortar shells from getting to the, the surface Be in interesting to look at that in the final attack when the two punishers come together again and support a mortar fleet or tank for a mortar fleet see how many are getting through now this time there's two coming through even though the rhinos are there so the behavior of these mortar shells seems to be very heavily influenced by RNG and that's just not playing the game kicks eye we should have known factors on weapons both ours and the AI targets weapons we should know what we're building onto our ships and with the, the countermeasure systems that I've got on the um, punishers that you know the, and the number of countermeasure weapons that I've got on them there should not be any mortar shells coming through at all certainly not in large clusters so exactly the same as before the Punisher has gone across to put the three turrets in a line so that it can use the royal guns to shoot straight through them the rhinos have held back with the Zoe rhino within their range circle uh, their remote targeting range the Punisher pokes around the corner and snipes at it the rhinos take down the Zoe rhino the last five volleys um, retarget to take down the torpedo tower and then the whole fleet can go and kill the OP in the middle it's not difficult once you've seen this pattern three or four times you'll be able to remember it and do it yourself it's very very effective so this time round there's a lot less damage first of all the Apollo survived and the Punisher is only at about one third of damage and the fleet as a whole has got less than an hour and a half's damage again the rhinos are instant repair probably all three of them together could instant repair bring it down to probably just over an hour and then I could either throw two coins at it with a five minute free speed up or I could just let them repair for an hour and do it all for free but that's still almost three times as much damage as in the first attack which had 27 minutes of damage so something has changed that the Apollos no longer work they were working in the weeks leading up to the first week of November the first week of November remember was when the 107s no longer appeared and only the 102s and 109s were appearing so something did change there I 
pretty much don't care how many reassurances kicks I issue in the forums something has changed and there's enough people on the forums that are complaining about it that it's not just me so here we are the fourth attack this time it's the two punishers with three vendettas and the vendettas are using the coaxial firestorm mortars why are they doing that Gaz you ask well it's dead simple you can see how much range they've got for their remote targeting but what happens when I pull them inside the arcs um, minimum range can those mortars still fire maybe maybe not but to counter that the coaxial mortars have got a another weapon in their arsenal and that's the rockets for short range up to I think it's a range of 68 so when the uh, uh, vendettas are inside the minimum range of the arc missile if the mortars can't fire then the co coaxial rockets certainly can and they are just as devastating against buildings as the mortars themselves so it means that we never have the problem that some ships have that in order to avoid receiving fire they have to get themselves in a position where they can't fire themselves sneaky huh yeah so exactly the same pattern as previously now you'll notice I've got no pinch loaded at the side of the map the top left side of the, the, the battle screen that means I have to rely on the vendetta's native speed to avoid the arc when it switches targeting from the punishers to the vendettas themselves and they are fast they're blisteringly fast they leave the punishers for dead in a straight race so it's absolutely no problem to them they do sometimes just get nipped by a little bit of splash because those arcs have got a big old splash radius coming around the corner put a punisher out front to snipe at that torpedo tower and with two sets of anti-mortar fire there is not a single mortar shell that should get through and with the combined anti-missile fire of the two punishers um, I don't think I've got anti-missile on the vendettas but there should be very few missiles getting through now imagine this fleet with a bullseye brigade on where every countermeasure shot is supposed to hit a target and roughly half the missiles are getting knocked out at the moment by just the two punishers so with a bullseye brigade crew there shouldn't be any missiles getting through why did we take six and a half hours damage on the fleet at the start of the video and do it three times on two separate days on the first mission first forsaken mission of this new format with no 107s and it was only hitting 102s it was not hitting 109s hit two targets on the Thursday night Wednesday or Thursday night and one on the following morning and all three times the fleet took six and a half hours damage so as we move out wide to avoid the cryo mines we just pre-target the arc missile at the other end and the positioning up here is very similar to what you've seen me using with the rhinos the only difference is that the parking point for the vendettas will be on the map edge because they're so fast I don't want them getting to the assault point before the punishers otherwise they'll be taking fire from um, the cold snaps and the, the executioners um, that are on the island I want only the punishers to be getting shot at 
and you know I'm sorry that you're having to wait for this to happen each time but I wanted to show these targets at actual speed so they're replaying and recording now at the speed that they happened in the battle so that you can pause at any point and look at exactly what's going on in terms of incoming and outgoing fire and as I've said if you don't have the patience to wait for your fleet to to creep around the outside like this you could always jump out reposition your fleet on the outside and jump straight back in and save yourself somewhere between 60 and 90 seconds on each target that of course is dependent on how much lag you're getting from the servers because quite often the loading screen leaving the target and then the loading screen coming back into the target takes longer than it does to sail around the inside of the target anyway so there goes the arc tell the fleet to get in there send them all to one point initially and then individually target the ships to where I want them to be while they're already on the move this just helps to reduce the amount of time that they, they could come under fire and you can see all of those mortar shells there was about five or six volleys were fired as the, the vendettas moved in they all landed at the same time and just flattened the platform <laughs> yeah karma right so as before Punisher peeks round the corner and then the support ships obliterate the torpedo target Punisher goes for the citadel and then the support ships obliterate that Bumf. and then move everybody to attack the Iron Curtain turret which will get the, ve the Vendettas to stop exactly where they need to to get the Zoe move the Punishers across so that they're still attracting the fire and one of my Punishers has gone crazy and decided to do the circle dance not that it matters, the island's dead anyway so the Punisher that's behaving itself will send it to peak the Zoe and the Vendettas can then flatten that and the splash from the mortars will take down the torpedo tower you can see that disappearing quite nicely and pop there it goes and send all five ships down to hit the OP it's not difficult this is it once you've got the rhythm you can hammer these out quite quickly um, I did couple of nights ago which is about three weeks after doing these recordings to make this video I took the um, Punishers and Vendettas out and I did um, 13 one or twos without repairing in just under an hour so there we are look 50 odd minutes that's roughly twice just under twice the damage that the Punishers plus Rhinos took so you've seen the four fleets in action now the one that gets the least damage and still gets the job done is the two punishers and the three rhinos to be fair the vendettas did not have the benefit of a pinch on that first island and i do know from the, my session last week and this week uh, doing tier five twice in both weeks and doing them in one sitting before sending the fleet back to repair to do the second uh, set of tier 5 that they will take as a fleet between 15 to 20 minutes damage on each target if I use a pinch on the first platform as I go in so a results comparison on the four battles as seen they were all done using uh, a one-star creeping death rogue crew and they were all done in one hit the first three used a pinch the last one did not so the two punishers the, the hailstorm and the gale punishers plus three rhinos 
um, did the attack in a fraction under 10 minutes with a repair time of 27 minutes. The Hailstorm Punisher with a Switchblade Apollo and three Rhinos did it in about 11 and a half minutes with a repair time of 190 minutes, 3 hours 10 minutes. The Gale Punisher with the Switchblade Apollo and three Rhinos did it in again just under 10 minutes with a repair time of 80 minutes, 1 hour 20. And the two Punishers together with three Vendettas and no pinch did the attack in 8 minutes 15 seconds with a repair time of 52 minutes. But you can expect that to drop to somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes um, if you do use a pinch on one of the end platforms. So that worked quite well. Shows the, the difference that you get. And the lessons and conclusions that I come to from this? Well, even using one pinch dramatically cuts repair times, as we saw between the first and the fourth attack. If you've got the time to build them, use two attacks with a pinch at each end and save even more repair time. The Northwest Island seems to have different damage output values compared to the Southeast Island. Whether it's from the Citadels or the Island, I'm still not sure, but more more mortar shells get through from the northwest than do from the, the southeast. Two countermeasure Punisher tanks save a lot of damage. Vendettas take more damage than Rhinos because they've got a 100% defense handicap. Vendettas with puns get round the target slightly faster than the puns and Rhinos and can avoid the need for pinches but at a repair cost. The countermeasure tank ships are key to surviving for one hitter tanks obviously a later testing, as I've already said, showed that with a pinch you can save a lot of damage. I've not tested with Citadels as yet. So, I hope you found this useful. Give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel, please. It all helps. And I'll see you again soon. Coming up, we've got videos from the November raid to help you prepare for the December one. Thanks for watching, everyone.